For more physics related videos, please subscribe. In this video, I'm going to go over Einstein's proof that light has mass, which it turns out is his original derivation of his famous equation E equals mc squared. I've rated the physics level in this video as easiest. In a previous video where I answered the question, does light have mass, I explained that this question is the subject of an ongoing debate between two camps among physicists, and in that video I explained that this entire debate comes down to a semantics question of what do we mean by mass, and that it arose because the term mass has been used for various different quantities and in various different ways over the history of physics. And the confusion really started when Einstein's theory of special relativity superseded Newton's laws in the process modifying the way Newton thought of mass. Specifically, under Newton, we had two types of mass. The inertial mass, which could be thought of as the quantity that makes it difficult to change an object's motion, or as the amount of matter in an object. The gravitational mass was the mass that was responsible for gravitational forces. And while these two were different in principle, they turned out to be the same experimentally. So effectively, we only had one mass. But then, with the introduction of relativity, we got a third type of mass, the rest mass. And it turned out that this is actually the amount of matter in an object, not the inertial mass. If you want to know more about this, you can go back and watch that video. The topic of this video is Einstein's proof that light has mass, inertial mass to be specific which it turns out is also one of his derivations of his famous equation E equals mc squared. So let's check out this derivation. Now for full disclosure, this is not going to be exactly Einstein's thought experiment. I've modified it slightly so that you don't need to know any advanced physics or special relativity to follow. But the principle of this thought experiment is the same. Einstein ran a thought experiment in which he had a box of length L. And we're going to say that this box is centered at position zero, meaning its center of mass position is zero. Now, it was known at the time that atoms could spontaneously emit photons, light particles. So he imagined what happens if a photon is emitted on one side of this box and travels to the other side. Well, since photons carry momentum P, we now have a momentum carried by the photon going to the left. But... There are no external forces here, so momentum has to be conserved, and since the box was initially at rest, the box will now have to move to the right, carrying the same amount of momentum, so that the net momentum is still zero. The momentum of a photon is equal to its energy divided by the speed of light, and the momentum of the box is equal to its mass times its velocity. So as this photon moves from one side of the box to the other, the box is going to shift to the right until the photon is absorbed by the other side of the box, at which point the whole system stops moving. Let's call the distance that the box has shifted to the right delta x. Now Einstein thought about this and realized there's a problem here. Even though momentum has been conserved throughout this entire process, the center of mass of the box has now shifted to the right by delta x. So the center of mass position of this whole system has changed. Well, in absence of external forces, this cannot happen. So Einstein reasoned it must be that the photon carries some mass to the other side of the box in order to ensure that the center of mass position doesn't change. If you're finding this video interesting so far, please be sure to like and subscribe. Maybe share it with a few friends. So now the obvious question is, how much mass is carried by the photon? So the way Einstein did this is he said, Let's call the mass that's associated to the photon little m. And let's imagine that this mass is initially sitting on the right side of the box because that's where the photon is going to be emitted from. So now if the box still starts off at position 0, the total center of mass of the box photon mass position is going to be the mass of the box, which is capital M, times its position, which is 0, plus the mass of the photon times its position, which is half the length of the box to the right, and we're going to call the right positive. Then we have to divide by the total mass of the system, which is capital M plus little m. Now this center of mass of the box photon system has to remain unchanged. So after the photon has been emitted and absorbed by the other side of the box, the new center of mass must be equal to the original center of mass. Well, the new center of mass will be equal to the mass of the box times its new position, which is delta x, plus the mass of the photon times its new position, which is the position of the left side of the box. 
which was originally sitting at negative L over 2, but it's been shifted over by delta x. And again, we have to divide by the total mass of the system. Now, what are we solving for? We're solving for little m, the mass of the photon. So I'm going to bring all the terms involving little m to the left side and the rest of the terms to the right side of the equation. Both sides of the equation have the same denominator, so they just cancel out. And we're going to be left with little m times L over 2 plus L over 2 minus delta x equals big M times delta x. L over 2 plus L over 2 is just L. So we can now divide both sides of the equation by L minus delta x to get that the mass of the photon is the mass of the box times delta x divided by L minus delta x. So now we have to figure out what delta x is. How far did this box shift over? Delta x, which is the change in position, will be equal to the velocity times time. Well, the velocity is equal to the momentum divided by the mass. So we can substitute that in. Now we have to figure out what the time is. Well, the time will be how long it takes the photon to go from one side of the box to the other. This will just be the total distance traveled by the photon divided by the speed of the photon, which is the speed of light. Well, the photon starts off at a position L over 2 and winds up at a position negative L over 2 plus delta x. So it will have traveled a total distance of the length of the box minus delta x. And the time that will have taken will be that distance, L minus delta x, divided by the speed of light. Plugging this expression for time into our expression for delta x, we get that delta x equals P over M times L minus delta x over C. Now the momentum is equal to E divided by the speed of light, because the box and the photon have to have the same momentum. So I can plug that in, and I'm also going to divide both sides by this quantity L minus delta x giving me that delta x over L minus delta x equals E over mc squared. Well, this quantity, delta x divided by L minus delta x, is exactly what I have over here. So I can just plug that in to get that little m, the mass of the photon, equals big M, the mass of the box, times E over big mc squared. The big m's divide out, and we get that the mass of the photon is equal to its energy divided by c squared. And to clarify, this is the inertial mass of a photon, because when this derivation was made, there was no other type of mass other than possibly gravitational mass. So Einstein's famous equation of E equals mc squared was actually originally derived as m equals E over c squared, where m was the inertial mass of a photon. And furthermore, this expression for inertial mass holds for all particles, not just photons. But as you can see, since the inertial mass is essentially just the energy, there really is no need for that term anymore. And in fact, once you're dealing with relativity, we don't really think in terms of inertia anymore. It's not really useful. We already have the term energy. There's no need to have two words for what is essentially the same thing. It is much more useful to reserve the word mass for rest mass. And photons have no rest mass. I hope you found this video interesting. If so, you'll probably like my next video, where we're going to discuss how much does light weigh, which is a different question from how much mass does light have. So if you'd like to know more, please be sure to like and subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified for the release of future physics videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.